So uh, welcome again to uh, LCN 2021. Uh, we have uh, three papers that have been selected through um, a strict um, review process. Three candidates for the best papers uh, are the um, are yeah, entitled as follows. So the first one is a data quality based scheduling for federated uh, age learning. The second one is um, a trust self sovereign identity system. And the third um, work is a blockchain layer zero. So um, the first speaker is Afaf Taik. Afaf, are you here? Yes, hi. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello. So um, you have, um, so to give you a, a chance and to all best, all best paper candidates to have the chance to prepare a comprehensive uh, presentation. So uh, you have allowed 20 minutes for the presentation. So please go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Afaf Taik from Université de Sherbrooke, and today I will present our paper titled Data Quality Based Scheduling for Federated Edge Learning, which I co-authored with Hajar Modut and Professor Sumay Sharkawi. So as you know, nowadays, data generated by uh, connected devices and smart applications uh, are all sent to the cloud to be further processed and analyzed. And this analysis is essential to build the uh, powerful models for uh, a better quality of service for uh, better predictions, better recommendations, and to detect, detect anomalies, etc. Uh, but the growing number of the devices and applications will soon overwhelm the wireless networks and the uh, cloud infrastructure. In fact, sending these huge amounts of data creates a huge communication overhead, and analyzing these data on the cloud requires uh, high computation power and uh, large storage facilities, which uh, also entails uh, high energy consumption. But the, the biggest uh, concern is uh, from the user side, because users are worried about their, their data. Sending uh, detailed records of uh, the applications, social media, uh, smart appliances reveals a lot about uh, the private uh, life of people. and. Uh, it should be protected. So the question that we ask is how can we address these challenges? Well, a, a great solution would be to push the analysis from the cloud to the edge of the network near or even on the devices that generate the data. However, this is not a straightforward solution because uh, we, ha we have to adapt the analysis and the machine learning algorithms to the new setting. This is where federated edge learning comes. Federated edge learning has emerged as uh, the go-to technique for privacy preserving machine learning at the edge of the network. And in this setting, uh, user equipment, usually consisting of uh, edge devices, collaboratively train a model with a uh, mobile edge, uh, cloud, uh, mobile, a multi-access edge server. And uh, the training, like uh, on the cloud, it is an iterative process. However, in this setting, we call it communication round because uh, it relies essentially on the communication. The first step in the communication round is uh, the MEC server, which sends a global model to a subset of uh, the devices. And each one of these devices will train the, the global model on their local data and create a new, new local models. And each one of these devices will send the updated model to the, the Mac server. The Mac server will then aggregate these models and create a new global model. And this process will be repeated until the model converges or a maximum number of communication rounds is attained. However, even if this technique will allow us to adapt the machine learning to this new setting, it still suffers from several challenges related to both data and uh, the resources. So the first aspect that we consider in uh, our paper and that should be considered in general is the uh, re challenges related to data. The overall training data set is composed of small and widely distributed data sets where each user has access to only a few training samples. 
And this may lead to models to overfit because they may perform good on the training data, but the model did not see enough, uh, enough examples to be able to generalize. The second uh, challenge is uh, the, the nature of the distributions. Because the distributions uh, depend on the user behavior, the distributions are non-identically and independently distributed. In simpler words, uh, the distributions vary from a user to another one, which means that a, if a user trains a model, this model will not perform well for the other users. And uh, the third challenge is uh, the unbalance. Each user has access to different number of samples. So we might have uh, devices that have access to several training examples and others that have uh, only a few, sometimes not enough uh, to constitute a uh, batch training uh, data set. And uh, moreover, uh, the training sets are highly redundant because they are related to repetitive patterns of the user behaviors. So uh, it depends, uh, a user might have uh, highly rich data and uh, others will have uh, repetitive and uh, very looking like samples. The last challenge is the, the privacy. These samples are subject to confidentiality uh, rules and they are highly privacy sensitive and so we cannot verify easily the how these data sets are so the first research question that we asked is how to evaluate how informative the local data sets are for each of the participants without hurting their privacy in fact this privacy aspect entails another set of challenges which are reliability because we do not have access to the data, we cannot know how, how much we can trust the models. So the models can be subject to model poisoning. Uh, a, uh, an adversary may want to send uh, false models with the uh, false weights or even just send the same model without training it. And an adversary may also launch some uh, targeted poisoning attacks while they can target the data and inject uh, false samples or even change the labels in some, uh, in some samples. And this last attack, which is called label flipping, is uh, what we focused more on on this paper. And it has been shown to be very dangerous to the overall training, even if it attacks only a few samples. So the second challenge and question that we asked is how can we evaluate the reliability of the participants? The third aspect that should be considered is uh, resources. The wireless edge network is con uh, constituted of heterogeneous uh, hardware. Uh, the, the devices have uh, different levels of available memory and uh, different uh, channel states and battery levels. And this dif difference in uh, communication and computation may lead to um, more device dropout uh, we cannot know which devices are available. Some devices will take more time for training than others, which uh, is called the struggler problem. And the other challenge is uh, the limitations. Uh, the, the resources at the edge are very limited, especially the bandwidth. And uh, uh, as we all know, the federated uh, learning usually is uh, set on a synchronous uh, manner. So the time is also limited. And this also makes a limit on which devices can be, uh, can be trained and which ones uh, should be selected in the training. So the resources should be optimized in a way to allow a faster convergence for the federated learning. And this leads us to the third question that we ask is how can we carefully allocate the bandwidth considering the data quality of the participants? So to tackle these challenges, our paper presents the following contributions. We first identify a set of data aspects that should be considered in federated edge learning. Uh, we also uh, design a data quality based priority measure that takes into consideration the data diversity and its reliability in a privacy preserving manner. And using this data quality based measure, we uh, formulate a data quality based scheduling problem. Uh, and we proposed an algorithm to solve it. 
uh, last, uh, we evaluated the proposed algorithm and we evaluated future directions. So in order to explain uh, our proposed algorithm, uh, we should uh, we consider uh, a wireless edge network composed of K user equipments, uh, a Mac server, and the base station. And each of these user equipment uh, has a local data set. And when, uh, when it is scheduled, it, we will allocate uh, a fraction of the bandwidth alpha, and it will train a local model. And uh, to, if, to carefully choose the participants for each one of these UE, we, uh, we define a uh, diversity index IK for each UEK, uh, which is evaluated on its local data set and um, a reliability measure, which we call reputation, and which will be evaluated on its uh, overall model. I will detail these two indexes in uh, the next few slides. Uh, so the first aspect that we consider is the data set diversity. And um, it, the, the idea first came uh, from, from active learning, where only the most informative samples are chosen to be labeled. However, in our case, in federated learning, the samples are already labeled. And we evaluate participants using their overall data set. So we need to find new measures and new ways to evaluate this, uh, this aspect. And so we consider, uh, the, the first thing that we consider is uh, how diverse are the samples. So to evaluate the, the, the samples diversity, we need, to, we need to choose an adequate metric depending on the use case. Uh, for instance, in the classification problem, we can see how even the data set is. Uh, to give you an example, if we have a model that classifies images of cats and dogs, and uh, a user has only dog pictures in their uh, data set, the model will choose to classify all the samples as dogs. And uh, so its model will not be able to classify cat pictures, and so it will be mostly useless. Um, we can also... Uh, consider the regularity of the time series. If a time series does not change, uh, it will not be useful for a recurrent neural network. And for a clustering uh, problem, we can evaluate a, su a subsample, uh, a subset of the samples and see how, how much they, they, they vary using cosine similarity, for instance. The second uh, aspect that we should consider is the data set size because the number of the available training samples is also important so as to avoid overfitting. And uh, last, we also consider the age of the update and the number of times uh, where the UE was not selected. Because if a device was not selected for several times, it might have more new information uh, compared to one that was selected several times. So in order to group all these measures into one metric. We use their uh, normalized values, uh, which we weight. And the normalization is uh, obtained through calculating the value on the maximum uh, achievable value. Um, so the second uh, aspect that we asked about was reliability. Now, reliability is a little bit trickier to evaluate. Uh, because we only have access to the model. So how can we use the model to see how reliable the, model, the, the device is? Well, the information that we have uh, is that we can use a test set. It's the first idea that comes to mind. Uh, we can uh, then uh, get an accuracy of uh, these models on a carefully chosen test set. And we can also use uh, the information about its uh, local accuracy. So using these two informations, we build a repetition evaluation where we compare how the local accuracy of a model varies compared to the average reported accuracies of the other devices. And we compare its local accuracy compared to uh, uh, the, the accuracy on the test set. So if a device's accuracy and values vary a lot, it might be an indicator that uh, the, the device might be either malicious or uh, that it is an outlayer. 
So this will allow us to give it less chances to be selected in future rounds. Using the repetition and the diversity measure, we define a data quality measure, which is the weighted sum of the data set diversity and its repetition. And uh, now we have a, an indicator to, to select the devices, but we still have the resources problem. So in order to take the, the resources into consideration, we formulate a, um, a scheduling problem where the goal is to maximize the overall uh, data quality value of the selected devices. And uh, the constraints are uh, that each device should be able to upload its model before the deadline. Uh, now, if we look at this problem, it is equivalent to a knapsack problem because each device has, uh, has a value that is uh, its data quality and we have a limited budget, which is the bandwidth. So in order to be able to transform this problem into a, an exactly a knapsack problem, we also need to evaluate a cost of the, the scheduling. And the cost would be the required bandwidth for it to, to upload its model before the deadline. But the knapsack problem is an NP-hard problem. So uh, we, we, uh, we need a heuristic algorithm or a greedy algorithm to, to solve it. So the, the greedy algorithm that we defined, we called the data quality scheduling algorithm, DQS algorithm. It first starts by evaluating uh, how much time each device has uh, to upload its model it is calculated directly from because we know how much time it needs for training and we know the deadline it's easy to infer the time remaining for upload and uh, then we use this uh, time uh, that we know to evaluate the required data rate uh, the data rate can be calculated using the model size and it can also be calculated using the um, the transmission power and the, the uh, channel gain. So we approximate the cost of each device CK with the, the inferred value of uh, the bandwidth fraction alpha. Then we order and we create a priority list of the UEs. We order them using a ratio of their data quality and their cost. And at last, we allocate the bandwidth using this uh, priority list as long as we have a remaining budget. And so this problem, uh, this algorithm has low complexity and it considers both data quality and resources. To put you all, to put, put, put all the pieces of the puzzle together, um, I will uh, recap by explaining how the data quality based federated edge learning works. So we first start by uh, scheduling a subset of the UEs using the DQS algorithm and then each of the scheduled devices will train the model uh, locally, and then each of the devices will update their uh, model gradient alongside the, the local accuracy and the, the data set diversity indicator. And uh, using these uh, received updates and the data set quality and the, um, uh, the local accuracy, we will reevaluate the reputation and the uh, recalculate the new data quality and build a new global model. And then this will be repeated until a desired accuracy is reached or a maximum number of rounds is, has elapsed. So in order to evaluate how, how our algorithm works, uh, we use the MNIST, which is a handwritten digits uh, data set, widely used for uh, image uh, image uh, classification benchmarks. And uh, we created unbalanced and non-IID distributions among 50 UEs in several runs. And uh, in each run, we select five UEs to be malicious and uh, their maliciousness is displayed by two label flipping attacks. The first one is uh, where the label six is uh, flipped into two. Uh, this attack is considered as mild and uh, less harmful to the training process compared to the attack where eight is flipped into four, 
which was considered by uh, previous works as uh, very harmful to the overall convergence of the model. Uh, the wireless edge environment uh, parameters are fixed throughout the simulations, and uh, the, the, the results that I will show you are uh, the average of several runs. We first started by evaluating the uh, data quality measure uh, independently from the wireless edge environment. And uh, the first thing that we noticed is that uh, in both runs, in both cases, in the case where six is flipped into two and the case where eight is flipped into four, in both cases, it's the sum of uh, both the reputation and data set diversity that won the race. Uh, however, if we look at uh, data set diversity and reputation independently, uh, we can see that in the worst case scenario where eight is flipped into four, uh, the reputation was more important as an indicator for, uh, for priority, whereas uh, in the milder case, um, data set diversity works uh, a lot better as a priority indicator. We uh, noticed similar results uh, using the DQS algorithm. Uh, however, additionally, uh, because the number of the participants uh, compared to the, the preliminary uh, results varied. Uh, we noticed that also that uh, in the very last rounds, uh, the re reputation as a priority measure was more important in both cases, while in the very few rounds, the tacit diversity constitutes a better indicator for priority. And so we conclude that um, maybe it would be a good idea to have adaptive adaptive weights for the data sets uh, diversity and the reputation by giving more priority for data set diversity in the first rounds and then giving more importance for reputation in the very last rounds. So to conclude, federated edge learning is a promising technique for distributed machine learning and privacy preservation uh, in wireless edge networks. And however, it is uh, subject to several challenges uh, in resources and uh, data, such as heterogeneity, scarcity, and uh, reliability. We defined a data quality measure that takes into account diversity and reputation. And uh, we also use this uh, data quality measure in a data quality based scheduling algorithm, which we evaluated extensively in MNIST and uh, through the label flipping attack. So for future work, uh, we know that uh, we want to explore uh, other data set properties in other use cases. And uh, we uh, want to choose adaptively the weights of the different data quality aspects. Uh, we also think that uh, incentives and punishment could be, be could be useful to enhance and uh, the reliability of the federated edge learning especially when coupled with traceability using blockchain, for instance. Thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to answer any questions. OK, thank you very much. Any question from the audience? So we have around five minutes for questions. Please, any question from the audience? So I start, I start by one question by myself. So please uh, go back to the um, slide 16. This one? Yeah. Um, so I didn't understand well the. Um... Sorry. No problem. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the um, the round the communication rounds in simulation you did. Yes. Say hey four six eight ten etc. So. Uh, what are this? Is this the round the communication round? Can you give uh, more explanations about that, please? 
So in order to uh, train the model, we need the, to, to train, to communicate with the devices through several communication rounds. And uh, in, in this case, we tested the accuracy on a separate uh, test for each of the resulting models, the global model that results in each scenario. And uh, in the case where uh, we prioritize devices based on both, uh, both their reputation and their uh, data set indicator, uh, diversity indicator, uh, we were able to reach higher accuracy in the maximum rounds that we set compared to the other uh, two metrics separately. Okay. But we did also you... looked at, yes. Uh, did, you, did you study the impact of scalability? This precision, for instance, in blue uh, remains the same if you have a big number of devices connected to the edge? Uh, no, we did not. Uh, we did not study scalability. Uh, however, it, it is a good uh, thing that we can uh, look at. However, since we always look at only a subset, these results can be relied on because uh, because even if we have a hundred devices, we will always be limited by the bandwidth. Okay. So the number, even if we have a big number of devices the number of uh, selected devices will be limited. Okay, good. So in your, in your simulation, um, yes. what is the distance between the end devices and the Mac servers? Uh, we generated devices uh, in a radius of uh, 500 meters. Okay. This is just a simulation study, yeah? Yes. We cannot have access to uh, 15 devices and set them up. Uh, we need simulation before deployment. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. good. Any question from the audience? I don't know, Sharif, if you want to add something or? I saw so someone I raised Gurkhan. their hand. Yeah, Gurkhan has his hand up. Go ahead, Gurkha. Hi, um, this is Gurkhan. I would like to ask a question about the data set selection. Um, what were the motivation for this MNAST data set selection? Do you see it really, this kind of data sets used in real applications? Well, MNAST is uh, the most widely used uh, data set in, in simulations in federated learning. And it is accessible to everyone. So we wanted the, that everyone has uh, can compare and verify our results and uh, replicate them. Uh, that's pretty much why we used MNIST. Since the first paper that was proposed in federated learning, all the advancements were uh, used uh, and evaluated using MNIST and uh, CIFAR. I hope this answers your question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other question from the, from the audience? If you have any question, please unmute yourself or ask it from the chat. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Afaf, for this great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.